Hello, is this thing on? Hello? Hello? Is this... It's Stone Cold! Summon Ologi! Jeremy Fultz, Cheho Jifkados, Mojanita Hadam Nitta, He doesn't. Bumpalat. Moen. Mark Legidos. Mark Chatados, Moen. Nox the Witsa, Mark. Halito. Oh, my name's Jeremy Fultz. This is the 11 o'clock hour here on KWSH, and we're going to be doing the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma radio show. Sitting next to me is not the handsome Delaney Pinnock, but even the more, more talented. And more handsome. More, we'll just say more. <laughs> more the more Mark Williams. Welcome to the show, Mark. Communications director. Thank you, Jeremy Fultz. Happy to be here. Good deal. Co-hosting. Yeah, co-hosting we, today. I feel like the A-team, part of the A-team now. Yeah, yeah. You you are the A team, Mark. <laughs> you you're the A team just by yourself. <laughs> so Mark, you um man, you've kinda had a busy week, busy weekend, you traveling. You know, Mark's also a uh noted Hall of Fame um cinematographer, director, native of native um movies and uh shows and today or this weekend, Mark, um you had a showing, right? Yeah, uh, late last week, uh, traveled to South Carolina, uh, it was Furman University. It's part nice. of their Native American Heritage uh, celebration, and um, one of the professors out there, she's Choctaw, and so knew my work. And uh, they have a Native American student club as well, so I uh, wanted to bring my uh, one of my stickball documentaries out there and screen it, and uh, it was... Uh, a cool introduction for them to see Choctaw stick stickball being played, and the uh, girls lacrosse team came out and watched and and got to see some stickball action. So uh, it was a good event, and and um, got back. Uh, well, while I was gone, um, I guess some things happened here on the Seminole Reservation. Yeah, did they yeah. give you an honorary doctorate? <laughs> no, no, not not not. Uh, not You're this a time. Hall of Fame Hall of Fame person, cinematographer. They they didn't give you an honorary doctorate out there. No, no, okay. no doctorate. Uh, just uh, just a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then some things did happen here on the Seminole Nation Reservation, kind of all all across Indian Country. All across Indian Country. Yeah, right. had had to do with those uh, those little metal things that go on the back of the cars. And I'm sure we'll get into that here in a yeah, little bit yeah, in, yeah. In, in the show. Also, over the weekend, Veterans Day, it was on Saturday, observed on Friday. Uh, the offices were closed on Friday. But, you know, um, we want to express our gratitude for everyone that served. Um, also attended the powwow this weekend in Shawnee um, on Saturday. Saw some good people over there. My cousin Toby was uh, Toby Gouge was the honored veteran and saw Chris and Vet Pal, Colonels. It was a good one over there. Marcus Harjo, you know, different people, but good food. Yeah, well, I, you know, I didn't stay for the food. Uh, yeah, I had my little hookty with me and um, kind of left a little bit early. But uh, like Mark said, Native American Heritage Month is observed each year in November as a time to celebrate the history, traditions, language, and stories of the Native American. Alaska Native and Indigenous Communities. In 1990, President George Bush signed a joint congressional resolution designating November as National American Indian Heritage Month. Similar proclamations have been issued every year since 1994. And then also coming up tomorrow, November... Wait, tomorrow's November? No. Yeah, tomorrow. This is tomorrow. Is it? Is it today's the 14th? Golly, I was thinking today was the 12th. Golly. So uh, tomorrow, the fifteenth, rock your mock day. So if you if you um, have a pair of your pair of your mocks, wear them tomorrow. I don't have any though, so I'm gonna have to have Jake Tiger. I think make me one today. You know, I've been trying to make it. I've been watching that video. You remember Jake did that video a few years back? Yeah. Of uh, how to make the pucker toe moccasins, and that's on YouTube. Yeah, that's on YouTube. Yep. It's one of our most watched uh, videos on YouTube. Yeah, Jay looks young and spry in that video too. <laughs> Fast forward two years later. <laughs> 
But yeah, I've, I've been watching that video. I've art, so I, I I did try to make me a, my hookty a pair of moccasins over the weekend. So I went to Tandy, where all urban natives go to get our deer skins. Now mm-hmm. I went to Tandy and um, bought me a deer hide, brought it back, measured my hookty's foot, and when I made it, it came out big enough to fit my foot. <laughs> So I must have mismeasured somehow. Yeah. I don't know what I did wrong. I thought I followed all the instructions that Jake gave, so I'm going to have to watch it again and try to make another pair tonight for, for Mika. So well, we'll, at least you got one to wear tomorrow now. I've, I've got one, so I'm going to have my Nike on one side and my mock on the <laughs> other side. Walking, maybe, in, walking in both worlds. Maybe I'll put that Nike symbol on that Moxican <laughs> I made on that other side. So, <laughs> All right, and so kind of moving on, Muskogee, Seminole, Wichita Association, Muskogee Churches. Church meetings happening this weekend. Butler Creek, Cedar Creek, Ufala, Grave Creek, Greenleaf, Hidgety, Nuyaka, Randall Mission, Sand Creek, Tallahassee, Dewathley, Tukpafka, Tegabuchi, Tuskegee, Wewoka Indian Baptist. All going on this week. And so get out there and visit the church that's having a church meeting. Uh, you might just make sure they're having um, their services this weekend. But it's always good to get out and fellowship. And go um, go partake in some of that uh, good food they have usually out there too around lunchtime. So, Rock Spring had theirs uh, last Sunday. Did you get you a plate? I, I sure did. I sure <laughs> did. Is that all? That is that all your yeah, interjection? That, that, that was my contribution to it. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. You didn't feel like a cow or anything afterwards. Or just. No, just no. <laughs> good deal. I usually feel pretty like a tick. You know, get full and just feel like a tick sitting there and just can't move, you know. <laughs> but every week, um, you know, we always talk about visiting these churches. And so it's a good thing to get out and um, see see the people in the community and um visit different churches and like we always say you might just call make sure they're having their their church services this weekend and um before you head on out there so all right anything to add there mark no no um yeah just be sure to check out with the churches first and um oh i I thought you was going to read the following thing the choga the lummy official public I thought we usually did a moment of silence. That's why I took my hat off and everything. Well, before we get there, the Choga de Lummi, the official publication of the Seminole Nation, is adding uh, four Sunday church service and uh, church uh, meeting dates to the monthly publication. So if you're a member of a Muskogee or Seminole church and you don't hear or see your church listed, please email seminolemedia at gmail.com and let the communications department know the name of your church and when your next church meeting is and they'll be able to update that and we'll be able to uh, relay that on the radio as well and then like mark was saying there every week we do talk about the ones who have started their journey a lot of families are missing loved ones today and we want to remember those families and members of the community and your thoughts and in your prayers also army vet rgy is Tallahassee. The grandfather of several, but also the grandfather of Seminole Nation, or Miss Seminole Nation, Princess Genesis Wise, Tallahassee passed away. So we want to remember that family as well. And uh, Miss Seminole Nation, Princess, and your thoughts and your prayers. And so at this time, we are going to go ahead and pause uh, for a moment of silence. Mado, mado, mado. And then also, uh, like Mark alluded to at the top of the hour, there were some things that happened while you were gone. Mark, do you want to take it over from here? Yeah, so I was in uh, South Carolina. Then I started uh, seeing some <laughs> stuff on social media. Uh, things happened back here in Oklahoma. So I guess uh, uh, we got word that OHP was issuing some tickets to tribal members. Not Seminole Nation tribal members, but I think, I believe it was an Oto, Missouri tribal member. Who received a ticket um, uh, this past week for um, what well, they call it an invalid tag mm-hmm. uh, because she was living off the uh, Oto, Missouri reservation, and so that started kind of a uh, a uproar, I guess, with uh, people realizing that this is something that a well, after a memo came out from the Oklahoma uh, Department of Public Safety 
uh, saying that this was going to probably start happening. And so uh, some concerned tribal members, civil nation tribal members, reached out to chief and executive office, and a uh, uh, council meeting was set up for Friday and to, to address these uh, concerns. So um, one, of the, one of the things that Stitt is, Governor Stitt is, I guess he keeps referring to is, is a public safety issue because uh, the uh, OHP and law enforcement doesn't have information uh, from these tribal tags. They said the tribes don't uh, give out that information, which is false. Mm -hmm. We found out from the council meeting, uh, Chief uh, uh, spoke about that, and um, they do let the uh, law enforcement, the state, uh, there's a database basically known as OLET, which stands for Oklahoma Law Enforcement Tele Telecommunications, that has all your travel tag information. And so when they pull you over, if you have a civil nation travel tag, you can, their information is there. So it's not a, it's not a safety issue. And so that's something that uh, chief and council want to kind of put out there and straighten out. Uh, but these tags or these tickets are happening. Uh, they wanted to stress that if you do get pulled over for an invalid tag, uh, a letter was sent out from the BCR uh, just telling the members to basically uh, stay calm, uh, go ahead and, and cooperate. And um, when you get your ticket, if you get a ticket for an invalid tag, uh, take it to the BCR office and they will get to the Attorney General. And um, one of the big things that came from this council meeting was the uh, voted uh, unanimously to appropriate some funds uh, for, this, for this cause. Um, and it's the, the funds basically is just for the invalid tag issues, not, not like speeding or anything like that. It's just for the invalid tag. So, um, very informative, uh, council meeting. Um, I think chief and, uh, BCR got up there. The attorney general spoke, uh, shared some good information. Um, hopefully some good things that would make the tribal members feel at ease. I hope, uh, if you wanted to watch the whole meeting, it's on our YouTube channel too. So you can go out there and watch it yourself. But, um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a, a quick breakdown. There's a lot more involved, but um, we do have a Facebook post that kind of breaks it down a little bit more, too. Good editorial that the Director of Communications wrote. But that, that again, is located on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. on the Tribal um, Facebook page, you might say. So if you search for Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, you'll be able to see that uh, report there. Also, there is a quarterly council meeting happening on December 2nd. The time will be 10 a.m. at the new council house. The agenda hasn't been released yet, but I'm sure it's uh, getting ready to come out. And then band meetings are starting to be announced, uh, usually. So the Monday before the quarterly general council meeting or before any council meeting, there is a band chiefs meeting that happens that Monday of and um, usually it happens at the council house or the new council house there. And then uh, the band, some of the bands that uh, have given notification of their band meeting, the Miccosukee Band, will be having a meeting on Tuesday, November 28th at 6.30 p.m. in the transportation building. This is before the quarterly meeting set for Saturday, December 2nd. And then the Tezagaya Harjo Band Quarterly band meeting will be on Thursday, November 30th at 6 p.m. at the new council house. And we'll get some more uh, band meeting information before before then. Um, they usually uh, either text us or email us about a week or so before the meeting. So we'll be announcing those on the Facebook page. But those are the two that we have right now. Uh So today, this is today, right? Yeah. National Diabetes Awareness Day. And so uh, this was kind of announced today through the diabetes program. In honor of uh, National Diabetes Awareness, the diabetes program is offering free health education and in-body assessments uh, today at the Chafegni Wellness Center. And uh, so that you can come in today and, and get that assessment done. They will also be hosting an annual Walk to Stop Diabetes event at the mission uh, at the softball field starting this Saturday at 10 a.m. If you are interested in the assessment or the event for this weekend, uh, please feel free to call them at 405-584-7941. And there's a lot of things going on over there at Jafigny. You know, they've got the chair aerobics that happens every Tuesday and Thursday um, at New Life Church in Wewoka. 
Uh, that's at 10 a.m. You register in person. You can show up at the Jafigny Wellness Center via email. But then also on Wednesdays, there's chair volleyball. And, you know, last was it last week or the week before we had week. IHS in and they talked about chair volleyball and we showed up on Wednesday. We went out there, um, took them up on the invite and we played a good hour of chair volleyball. And man, they, I got the very first volley. I got hit in the head three times <laughs> and it was by Delaney who was sitting by, right behind me. I don't know if he just took it out on me. And, well, see, that's what I heard. I heard Delaney got pretty, he's, I guess he's competitive. Yeah, he, he's a pretty competitive guy, and uh, they had to calm him down a little bit a couple of times. Yeah. You know, he didn't get out of his chair though. You know, our admin assistant came with us, well, Catherine Howe, and she got out of her chair, and spiked the ball, which is the the rule. It was not do. the whole point of chair volleyball? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sitting in the chair, but regardless, we had fun, and so uh, thanks for to IHS for opening them up or open the building up for us to come on out and having a good time. And so they said, make sure you tell everyone in radio country, all the millions of people listening and on the res to come out on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, the new life church and have a good time. And it was, you just show up and have a good time. So, and then also just a quick reminder, if you uh, want to get involved with any of the chair aerobics, you can call Jerome Harrison, four zero five five eight four seven nine two three. And then the walking program signups are tonight. This is also put on by We Woke IHS. Um, there's, uh, the walking signups tonight are in Seminole at the Seminole First Baptist Church, the bridge. There are only two other dates to sign up after tonight. So if you plan on participating, please be sure to make it to one of the dates listed. And so today is the 14th, which will be from 6 to 7. And then there's also November 20th at the Holdenville Indian Community Center, which is 6 to 7. And the final sign-up here in Seminole will be the 28th at the bridge uh, from 6 to 7. And so if you're wanting to get in contact with the Wawoke Indian Health Center, Community Health Department, give them a phone call at 405-257-7541. And then, Mark, you already kind of talked about the Walk to Stop Diabetes that ha that's happening this weekend at the softball fields on the beautiful Mikasiki Mission uh, campus. The first 75 people receive a free adult long sleeve T-shirt, and it's open to the public. So come walk out. Or come walk out with us. Come walk with us on Saturday. We're not walking out of nowhere. We're walking to, to walking at the mission. So uh, the phone number, if you want to get some contact information, 405-652-1167. And a couple of announcements from the communication department. Uh, one of the stories we are working on right now is the uh, history, basically, about this station here at KWSH. And how it started, and uh, we went and visited the original building there in Owoka and, and walked around and took a uh, took some pictures. And um, so right now we are looking for some old photos or any stories of people remembering those uh, programs back then. So um, we're needing your help. Uh, if you have those stories, if you have those old photos, you can email us at seminolemedia at gmail dot com and uh, help us put something together. Uh, we're also looking for birthday shout outs, um, something we always try to do every month. Um, some, some months we get a lot and some months we don't, we don't get a whole lot. So, uh, just don't forget if you have a loved one, um, someone you want to give a shout out to, you can email Seminole media at gmail.com. Or if you just want to, um, uh, we do obituaries as well, just kind of to remember a loved one as well. You can send that to us. Um, but on top of that, we're always looking just for more stories, you know, more community stories. Um, a lot of tribal members are out there just doing some really good things. So we want to acknowledge them. Uh, so reach out to us, uh, same email, seminolemedia at gmail.com. We'll reach back out to you and get the information and get it in the paper. You know, it's, it's kind of, kind of against our, our nature to, to brag on ourselves a little bit, you know, being stagiati people. But sometimes it's nice hearing the story of someone else that's that's doing really good or even trying to do stuff. And so when when people accomplish things, it's good to know know about it. And just so that way, even our young ones, our young ones are watching and they're watching um, people succeed, and that just gives them more of a 
more of a, a good drive to do what they want to do, you know. Just give, yeah, gives them a, a good support system, I think, when they have the whole community backing them and behind them. And so uh, hopefully we can do something like that by putting their stories out there. Good deal. And so if you like to eat, there is a cooking demonstration starting on Wednesday, November 15th at the Food Distribution Program Kitchen at 1 p.m. So this will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. It says, join us. We'll be making a recipe for you to taste and lead some basic stretching activities. Tomorrow on the menu, bean and veggie salad, Mark. We so, did we did one last week, too. Was it was last week, I believe. Yeah, it was the hominy quesadilla. Yeah. Yep, that was pretty good, pretty yummy. That was, we, we shot some video of that, and I, I believe our media specialist is putting that together. Good deal. And so we'll be releasing that. So you'll get to see, you can get the recipes and maybe make it at home. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Then with Christmas coming around the corner, a lot of um, our departments are starting to do uh, drives, toy drives, clothing, dr clothing drives. And so the Head Start and Early Head Start's doing a tremendous coat, hat, and glove drive this year. So if you'd like to help sponsor a student or a few, please reach out to Trissy Bruner. Her phone number is 405-303-7201. Or email her at bruner.t at sno-nsn.gov. Items are going to be due back by December the 6th. So we just mentioned Rex Haley from the Food and Distribution Program, but he's also the, the um, he's with the Honor Guard as well. And uh, they are doing another benefit. They had a grocery bingo a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Um, but they're having a second one on December 2nd. Uh, to try to raise funds, I believe they're trying to go to Florida uh, next next uh, next year. Yep, for the Honor Guard competition. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to help them uh, get out there and make the trip. So on December second, they're having another benefit grocery bingo. Uh, it's the food sale starts at eleven o'clock. The grocery bingo starts at one p.m. And this will be at. The OEP, I believe, is that right? Uh, should be at the um, oh, at the Veterans Building, Veterans, the Veterans Building, building yeah. at the Mississippi Mission. Uh, if you want more information on how to get involved, you can contact Alex Fish at four zero five four three two seven eight five eight, Philip Kuhn at nine one eight seven five eight eight two four eight, or you can uh, contact Rex at four zero five two two zero five three four two. And just try to get those guys to Florida. All right. Announcements from housing. Uh, the housing authority management can be seen by appointments only due to COVID cases and flu cases. They are taking necessarily or necessary precautions to keep their staff safe. They can call or you can call 405-257-6604 to schedule an appointment and or if they need to meet with house management. Native vendors are wanted at the second annual Native Christmas Bazaar that's going to be taking place December 4th at the Wewoka Civic Center. Uh, this will be uh, from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, all proceeds from the bazaar will be going to the Boys and Girls Club of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. Uh, so they are needing some vendors. If you are a vendor wanting to get involved, you can call 405-257-6604, or you can email administrativeofficer at hasnok.org. That's H-A-S-N-O-K dot org. All right, and then also from the ICW, this year our ICW toy drive will be a Hokti and Jibani uh, tree, or Jibani tree. Jibani, Jibani <laughs> tree. All of our Seminole Nation tribal children in the custody of the state or tribe will be in ornament on the tree. And so if you'd like to sponsor a child for Christmas, please come to the Seminole Nation tribal court lobby and take an ornament. Their goal is to provide Christmas for approximately 120 Seminole children. And the tree will be available starting today. So get out there to tribal court, to the lobby, and grab an ornament. All right. Uh, a couple of announcements from the JOM program. They at the uh, Academy of Simulation Simula uh, Simulation Academy of Seminole <laughs> is having a bingo night on November seventh, seventeenth, at six thirty p.m. in the cafeteria. 
The doors open at 6 p.m. Concessions will be available and all the proceeds will be going to supplying all the students with school supplies next year. If you uh, want to go and need a babysitter, they help. Uh, the seniors will watch pre-K through the fifth grade, three dollars a child. Uh, they w will show some movies in two different rooms, so um, they can watch your kids while you go do some bingo and uh, help the students out over there. Um, Marcy also asked me to announce that Sasakwa is having a JOM meeting tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure of the time yet, but um, once we get that, we'll announce that on the Facebook page as well. And the Seminole Nation High School seniors are having a banquet fundraiser also on December 2nd. A lot of things are happening on the 2nd, it looks like. Golly, yeah. December 2nd at the OAP building from 11 a.m. to 2 o'clock, there will be a $7 lunch special. And all the proceeds will be going toward the Simul Nation uh, High School Senior Banquet Fundraiser. You know, that's going to be bowl of chili or bowl of beans when it's choice of cornbread. Man, this sounds good. I'm hungry. That's the Saturday during council meeting, too. Yep. General council meeting. Maybe we'll take a break and head over there for, for lunch. Yep. Also, Native Market, the December 15th and 16th at the OAP. Um, on December 15th from 5 to 8 p.m. and then December 16th all day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Mikasiki Mission OAP building. Free admission. Come shop native made gifts, beadwork, patchwork, art, skirts, shirts, jewelry, and lots more. Last minute Christmas gifts. And then if you're a vendor, they are still taking vendors uh, for. Um, $25 plus a donation item for silent auction. And then uh, you can contact Marcy Harjo or Dana Harjo at 405-563-9057 or 405-241-6801 to uh, get you a vendor space. And an uh, announcement from the Judgment Fund. Uh, this is regarding the Civil Nation Clothing Program. The original deadline, I believe, was for September 30th to get your application in. But to, due to the increased calls regarding the clothing card deadline, uh, the Judgment Fund is extending a final deadline date to spend all funding from, from the October 31st to November 30th. So that deadline has been extended. Uh, December 1st, all funding will be removed. All right, and then two announcements from the Princess Committee. The Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Royalty will be hosting an 18 and over men and women's basketball tournament. Now, this was the 40 and over tournament, but now it's an 18 and over men and women's tournament. And so to register, you can contact Gina Langford um, or Genesis Talamassee, 405 471 3038 or 918. 3784026 but then they're also having a cornhole tournament and guess what day it's on December 2nd. Dece <laughs> December the 2nd <laughs> entry fee $40 bring your own bags registrations at noon bags fly at 1 and again if you want to sign your team up for the cornhole uh, you can contact Gina or Genesis 918 3784026 or 405 Four seven one thirty thirty eight. I think we made the announcement last week. The OAP is uh, now serving um, meals to the public uh, beginning November first. So individuals fifty four and under can now purchase meals uh, for seven dollars, and I believe it's cash only. We have the menu on our travel newspaper, and we can post it on the Facebook page too, so people can follow what uh, what they're having that day yeah i think language we're going to swing by there tomorrow and drop off some more cross crossword puzzles for thanksgiving so it'll be another good thing to, to drop off there just coincidentally around lunchtime you're gonna yeah just by. right around noon maybe 11 <laughs> but but also we woke ihs in honor of world diabetes day and national native american heritage month studious says november 16th from 9 to 12 at the Haney Center, this was another thing. The IHS was here. Donna Drew and uh, Larissa Roberts was over here 
promoting last week is the uh, health fair that's going on uh, November 16th from 9 to noon at the Haney Center. Make sure you get over there. They've got some cool things for you to grab. A buddy of ours that we've had on the show a couple of times, Oscar uh, Sellers is uh, a wrestling, professional wrestling promoter, promoter, and he's a Simulation Chapel member, and he's having another event at uh, the calling of this the Sweet Potato Bash. Um, this is the Majestic Championship Wrestling, and um, this is your, in your neck of the woods. Yep, sure is. At the kite. Say it, Mark. Say K- it. Legi <laughs> Travel Town. <laughs> Pretty close. K- Legi Travel Town Family C- Life Center. They're going to be having another event um, over in Wetumpka on November 17th. On Friday, November 17th, doors open at 6 p.m., and uh, the action starts at 7 p.m. Tickets are $20. VIP uh, is $20. General admission is $10. For information, you can contact Oscar at 405-683-3887. All right. And then I guess some birthdays we need to announce. Addison Beaver turned 18 on the 3rd. Sorry, we were a little late on that one. Ashley Dunn, April Wynn, Shannon Arnicher, Tracy Tanyan Jr., Marcus Gwynn, better known as MC1, Kara Wolf, Sterling Harjo, I believe, Geraldine Wise, Joseph Harjo, Jeff Harjo, Kel- Kelvin Kemp, Susie Given, Solomon Kuhn. Is that Carmen? Carmi. Carmi Punka, Cameron Archer, T. Harjo, John Kip Whitekiller, Catherine Harjo, Josiah Bender, and Sterling Harjo. So, Mado and happy birthday. You can catch the rebroadcast of this radio show on the Facebook page, YouTube, and tribal website, sno-innocent.gov for the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma every Wednesday around 8 p.m. If you have news or announcements you want to share on the Community and Events Facebook page, please email the communications staff at seminolemedia at gmail.com or call 405-652-7251. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, Tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on KWSH 97.7 FM or the legendary 1260 a.m. There's a lot of people here, but you want the honors? No, go ahead. It's your show. All right. For Mark <laughs> for Mark Williams, I'm Jeremy Fultz. Mado and G. Jotley. Peace. Huh? <laughs>